Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you the hidden cost of using exceptions in C Sharp. Now this video by no means intends to make you stop using exceptions, rather show you alternatives when exceptions actually don't make sense from a programming standpoint. Because it is a feature that can actually control your application's flow, but if misused, can lead to potential performance issues. In this video, I'm going to show you the performance discrepancy between using and not using exceptions. And also, I'm going to show you a very concrete example of what you might have actually seen in your own ASP.NET Core applications or any sort of application that is written in C-Sharp and .NET. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to this notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? Well, first, I want to show you some benchmarks before I dive into the APIs showcasing the issue, because I think it's important to actually set a baseline for what this is about. So first and foremost, if I show you here, I have a simple program.cs, which all it really does is it runs a benchmark. And this benchmark has two methods. One of the methods will use a random uh, double, and then half of the time it will actually uh, return true, and then half of the time it will return false. And this could actually just be simplified with return, but I want to make clear what I'm exactly doing here. Um, and then in this other one, the exception throw, I have the same logic, but half the time it will actually throw an exception and then return false so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and turn this into release and then execute this benchmark and what this will show us is give us a baseline for like if half the time something was to fail with an exception um, or return false then what will be the difference in performance so let's wait for the benchmark to finish and see what we have. So results are back and let's see what we have here. Well, the no exception method returns in nine nanoseconds, while the exception one returns in 1000.7, which is basically 1.7 uh, microseconds. So many, many times more. Now, obviously this is very small in the grand scheme of things and it's probably something you should ignore, but depending on how you use exceptions in your flow, this can actually have a real impact. And let's see, what I mean by a very common scenario that I see all the time in ASP.NET Core applications. And honestly, I don't understand it, not only from a performance standpoint, but also from a domain uh, standpoint. And why would you use that feature in this specific scenario? So let me show you this API here called Exception API. So all this really has is a, con a user controller, and then it has a single endpoint to create a user. And in that service, all we do is we check for valid email and whether that email exists in our database to see if the user actually exists and then we return the user and obviously here if you were to use a real database you would also have the code to insert into the database we don't have any of that because we're just proving the the exception thing and now here i have an exception filter and i don't know if you've seen this feature before but this exception filter can act as a middleware so if there is an exception in our flow and it hasn't been handled yet, and it is of a specific type, then you can return a result based on that exception. So let's see what the flow of this application would be to fully understand and appreciate what is happening here. Let me just um, expand this a bit so you can see what's happening. Here we go. So if I send a request here, then you see I hit the breakpoint, I go in at that thing, and then it checks if the email is valid. The email is indeed valid and then we just return success. So that middleware was never touched. Now, if I go and I mess up my email and it's no longer an email, this will actually throw. So let's see what happens. Is it an email? Uh, oh, it is not. So it's gonna throw an exception. And what happens is when you throw an exception with that middleware registered, and you can see it registered um, here as a filter in the startup, then we get in that, we have the exception context. We check that the exception hasn't been handled. So, and it is of a specific type. In this case, it is a validation exception because it extends that exception type. And then we set the body to have the error message. So Nick Chapsis is not an email address. Please try again. And then we say that we did handle it. And if you do that, it will automatically use that message to return the error. And I'm sure you've seen this before. You've seen something like this, some variation where exceptions are used to return a specific type of error when something on the domain logic is wrong. And you can say that, hey, you can do this with model binding, but the reason why I put it in the service is because this represents domain level validation, not really contract validation. Uh, same goes for the email exists, for example, which wouldn't go into the, the model state. It would be into your domain's uh, logic. So 
this has been very common, at least in my experience. I've seen it hundreds of times. I can't even count. Now, the idea of using exceptions to represent the domain idea isn't really bad. However, I personally think that there is a better alternative which works better in some scenarios, if not all of them. And I'm going to show you now what I have in this alternative API. So in this alternative API, I still have the same user controller, but instead of using uh, exceptions, I'm using the one of library to return a discriminated union. And what happens here, actually, let me just debug this to show you what happens here. So the application is running and I'm going to go ahead and try to make it fail. So this now will check if it's a valid email. It's not. So it's going to return the invalid email address. One of which, by the way, I have a video about and it's a library I really like and I hope this feature actually natively gets supported in C Sharp at some point. Uh, one of will accept any of these three types as an acceptable response and then will use operators to implicitly or explicitly convert to them. Um, the rest of the code is the same. And what's going to happen is it will accept that and then that response is one of these three. In our scenario, it is invalid email address. And this, by the way, it is a read-only struct. Um, and when that is returned, as you can see here, it is matched against um, whether you're going to return OK when it is a valid user or whether it is an error. And as you can see here, you still get the same error. Now, you might say, Nick, I don't like this. This looks very weird. This looks very odd. Why would you do that? Well, you don't have to. You can actually create an extension method, which is what I have done, called match response. And then this will automatically, dynamically match any potential validation error and use the same approach where you just have a catch-all approach whether if a type implements a specific interface then you automatically map it and this if i just run this again and i don't think i should be debugging this but whatever um as you can see let me just remove all these endpoints this will return that and when it is a valid email um, it will work fine without any problem and then if it's removed again works like this. Now, the interesting thing is that we still have the same domain level concerns and look and feel, but I think a more appropriate approach to it because exceptions, in my opinion, shouldn't really be used that way because they can actually have performance impact, like I said. And let's see what that impact would be. I'm going to go back to that benchmark project and I'm going to import a bunch of benchmarks I wrote already, which compares the one-off approach and the exceptions approach. So let's see what we have here. I have created an API benchmark, which will use the web application factory, which is usually used for in-memory API testing to test the full flow. And then I've imported a bunch of good and bad uh, request objects. And I have two different HTTP clients, two different randomizers, um, both with a seed to be deterministic. And I'm using that to call the user endpoint and return the response back. And then I have a chance of failure of 0.5, meaning half the time this will actually fail. And now what this allows me to do is check from an end-to-end -end perspective if happy requests were to fail, either with an exception or a one-off, um, struct return what that performance would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and let's see what results we get. So results are back and let's see what we have. The exception version is roughly 20 microseconds slower than the one of version. Uh, don't really look at those allocations. They're not really accurate because we're testing externally. So don't worry about it. Now you might look at this and say, Nick, that's not even 20 microseconds. Why should I care? Well, you should only care if those 20 microseconds actually matter to what you're doing. Performance is contextual. If you need them, you can get them for free. And they're not always going to be there. Here we're testing 50% failure rate, basically. Uh, so realistically, it should be lower. But that also depends on how much you're abusing the feature. So it's completely up to you to decide whether that actually makes a difference or not. But my duty is to show you that this is potentially a problem that you might want to take a look at. And I think it's a better coding approach to go with the alternative anyway. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.